Do you want to see an actual live 3D print of a home? Do you want to talk about affordable housing? And do you want to know about new technologies? All of that and more in this interview. I have Zach from Alquist, and he is actually live on the site as it happens. We are going to get into all of this, so let's go. We've got Zach here from Alquist, and we're going to talk about all things 3D printing. First of all, Zach, thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thank you. Zach is actually right now on the Project Virginia site. They're doing 3D printing, and he's here to talk about that. We're going to talk about all things around 3D. And I think that the first thing we should highlight is what is 3D printing? So essentially, this is building something using a robot. And that uh, goes back to, it, we've been doing this for years, but mostly with 3D printing, we've been 3D printing small project, uh, projects and products using mostly plastics and polymers and things like that, which of course we're still doing. And our company will be doing that as well for the interiors of the homes. But what we're doing is 3D concrete printing, which is not entirely new. It's been around for... The, almost a decade now. Uh, globally, there's over 100 companies 3D printing uh, structures out of concrete. But here in America, there's less than five. And we are 3D printing a home with concrete right now. Nice. So why would we want to choose a 3D printed method over, let's say, what we've been doing for quite a while here? What, what is the advantage? There's a couple of factors going on. You know, first of all, we've been building houses the same way virtually forever. Uh, and it's an industry that needs to adapt and change the times at the moment. Uh, I wouldn't say that this is trying to disrupt anything. That's not our goal. Our goal is to aid the process, and we've gotten far away from being able to have basic home ownership. Many Americans, most Americans, are not, a, not able to afford their homes, and that's for a variety of reasons, and it was already expensive before the pandemic. Now it's incredibly expensive. On top of that, you've got shortages of, of uh, products, especially the lumber industry, uh, all sorts of things that affect the home building industry. And so what we're trying to do, there's three cost savings here. There's cost savings in labor, time, and material across the board. Meanwhile, we're working on a training program to train the future workforce in this industry to join what we're trying to do and build this 3D community nationwide. Very nice. So as it relates to Alquist right now with um, you know everything you've been doing here, what is the, the central goal exactly? Is it um, you know sort of the future expansion of it? What, what exactly are you trying to accomplish here? So our goal is to make housing that's affordable and get back to the American dream of being able to have wealth and equity across all uh, economic platforms and, and just in general across America. Our focus is rural America. And I have a, another company that I'm involved with called Atlas Community Studios, where for the past six years, we've been working in rural America in over 20 states, helping towns average size of about 3,000 people uh, revitalize, do economic development, creative placemaking, Basically, what do these communities need to do to attract and retain that next generation of workforce? And that's things like basic broadband, medical services, quality of life, cultural institutions, restaurants, breweries, childcare, maker spaces, et cetera. We help those communities do that. But the number one issue in all these towns is housing. And that's how we fell into what we're doing now with Alquist. I learned about 3D printing housing uh, about six to seven years ago. I've been obsessed with it ever since and trying to figure out how to do it. And that led to us partnering with Virginia Tech and Virginia Housing to do this first project here in Richmond. Very nice. I, I think it's an interesting whole concept, really, when you look at, you know, there's so much news about 3D printing and it, it really spans a lot of different things. And we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But just to see it actually being put into place with the housing specifically, because as you said, things are becoming becoming so expensive and so on. So I think that's really great. What I wanted to know is how long does it actually take to build a structure that's livable? So first of all, we say print a structure, not build a structure. Um, but uh, to print what we're working on. So right now we're doing, and I can show you here and see if I can flip the camera around. You can see it. This is the site here. Can you see that okay? Yes. Okay. So what we're doing is we're printing a 1,500 square foot home here in Richmond. 
Uh, this is the first one. So it's taking a little bit longer than we would uh, normally do. We're also having a heavy research on this project because of Virginia Tech, which is great. But once we get to the point of running this seamlessly, which we anticipate should be by the end of this year, uh, we can do a 1,500 square foot home in about 20 hours. And we're getting to the point where we're hoping to be done with the home, the print of the foundation, or excuse me, of the structure in about a week. So you got a day to set the machine up, uh, three days or so to print, and then a day to take it down. And just to give context here, how long would that take you know, if this was a standard build when not, not being 3D printed? Depending on the crew and location, et cetera, anywhere from two to six weeks, depending on a lot of different factors. Interesting. So there's definitely time savings once, once it's all dialed in. That's right. That's really good. Yeah. So, so where is sort of the, the future of this going, at least in the medium term? Um, you know, are, are you expanding it into, into different locations? Are you looking at doing different applications for this? Um, you know, trying to apply it not just to homes, maybe to, to commercial buildings, anything. I'm just curious what sort of you're looking in the medium term. Oh, it's a great question. And so our goal is to be in every state by the end of this decade. Uh, we're really, the rural housing crisis is severe. It was challenging before COVID, it's worse now. But uh, if there's any silver lining to COVID, which is a weird thing to say, uh, it's that it presents a pretty incredible opportunity for rural America and small communities to grow. There's people who are watching migration patterns of millions of people. We believe upwards of 20 million people will have, will have left or will be leaving major urban centers and going to suburban and rural areas around the country. Uh, that means they need places to live. We've got a housing shortage of over 5 million homes nationally, and every year it gets worse. So this is an epidemic across the whole country that has to be addressed. 3D printing is certainly not the only way to address it, but we believe it's a very strong way to do it. Uh, but our, in terms of short-term plans, uh, after this home, uh, we're going down to Williamsburg, Virginia, where we're going to be printing a home with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, then we're going to the small rural town of Exmoor, Virginia, on the eastern shore where we're going to attempt the first ever 3D village in America. We're going to do five homes next to each other on a block. Uh, and then we'll be coming out to Iowa, where I'm based, uh, to go to a small community there called Stanton uh, to do a couple homes there. Uh, next, that's all 2021 into early 22. Next year, we're planning some very large projects that we're going to be unveiling here soon uh, in a couple different states besides just Virginia and Iowa. Interesting. Now... Uh, one of the last things I wanted to ask you here was, what are the limitations of 3D printing? I've read articles they are going to 3D print organs for people. They're 3D printing, you know, anything you, you could ever think of. But I'm just, I wanted to know what, what you think are the limitations to it, at least as they exist today. You know, I, I would hesitate to say there's any limitation on it. You know, what we're looking at is we are, one of our goals is to be able to do 100% 3D printed home, meaning everything in the home is 3D printed, not out of concourse, but other materials. In addition to that, we're looking into other materials to print with. Uh, concrete's great, but it's far from the most environmentally friendly uh, material. We're looking into other uh, recycled materials, and we're hoping to have a new mix by the end of next year that we could be printing with that's much more sustainable. Uh, but in terms of where this is going to go, it, the, we're at the very bleeding edge of this. There's you know, less than five 3D printing structural companies in America right now. Uh, that's going to change dramatically pretty quickly. Our goal is to have an open community. We want to be working with the other companies that are out there, uh, learning from each other, sharing best practices. It's kind of like at the beginning of, uh, of when the Internet started. There were only a handful of groups trying to get this going. They all knew each other. Uh, they played nicely in the sandbox, more or less. Uh, that changed, of course, after time. But we want to have something that can be shared, a community sense of what we're trying to do, because our, our vision is housing that's affordable for everybody in America, and you can only achieve that by working collaboratively. Interesting. So I want to thank you. Um, where can people find out more about this technology, about what you're doing here, and, and let everybody know? Uh, so go to allquist3d.com, our website. We're also on all social media. Uh, we were doing a live stream earlier today. We'll probably do that again uh, later this week and in the future. So check all that out. Uh, hit us up there. Shoot me an email if you have some ideas. But we'd love to talk. And uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you.
Thank you very much on behalf of myself and my subscribers here. Thank you for taking the time today. You bet.